Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. In this lesson number 0.2.2, we're going to talk about Packet Tracer, which is a very powerful tool created by Cisco for Cisco Networking Academy students. So Packet Tracer is free and you can access it or you can download it by going on networkacademy.com or netacad.com. Um, it's basically free. It's very powerful. You have pretty much all the tools that you need to prepare for your CCNA. It's really important because we're going to be using Packet Tracer in this course for all the labs and all the practices. Of course, we will have GNS3 as well when I want to do some packet capture or things like that. But most of what we'll be doing will be on Packet Tracer. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to get it how to install it and we are also going to do something pretty fun because as i told you in every lesson you're going to learn something something exciting so today we're going to build a quick or a small website in a server on packet tracer and we are also going to attach some few computers for them to access the website that's on a server. So that's something, I know it's like jumping right in, but that's how we learn here. You learn by practicing, you learn by doing things and then understanding them. So I'm going to show you that. I know we haven't talked about IP addresses, we haven't talked about switches or routers. Um, I have a video here on KB Trainings in which I show you five ways that you can practice networking. There are many ways, but you can, uh, I just chose five. You can use Packet Tracer, which is a simulator. Uh, a simulator is different from an emulator because a simulator doesn't use real images. It's just a, a bunch of instruction. It's a computer program that is created to act like a real device, but it's really not. Packet Tracer will, will be short in some commands that you may use in some advanced configuration. That's why it's good for beginners. If you get at some point, you may be having issues some people go to GNS3 directly, which is um, which is um, an emulator, which means that it uses real images on a virtual machine. So GNS3 is good. Um, it's kind of uh, spe uh, stepping your game up a little bit, but Packet Tracer is perfect for you if you are a beginner because it's easy to install. It's light on your computer. Actually, I just showed you in the last lesson. Let me go back here. I just show you in the last lessons what are the minimum requirements to install Packet Tracer on your laptop or your computer. You can see that you need to have at least two gigs of RAM, which is pretty common. A lot of computers today have more than two gigs and four gigs is recommended for RAM and you need to have a good, um, a good CPU on your, on your laptop or your computer. So to get Packet Tracer, as I said, let's bring our computer. This is the KB training computer that we installed in a video somewhere here when I, when I was rebuilding my lab. So let's go on Google and say download, yep, download Packet Tracer 7.3, which I think is the latest version. Okay, so you have a few options. This is the link to the Packet Tracer course on netsacad.com, which is the networking academy from Cisco. You can come on here, enroll to the class, and uh, Yep, click on sign up, English, of course, and then put your first name, last name, and email, and then just enroll to the class. It'll send you an email so you can create an account with Network Academy and use it. But for some reasons, today and since yesterday, actually, I cannot authenticate on the Cisco Identity Server. For some reason, it just doesn't work. So I'm going to give you some alternatives, which are not recommended. But uh, since we couldn't log in in the Cisco website, I tried many times. I didn't want to go through the, you know, the service support and everything. So there are also some links here, like the second one in uh, yeah, there's a website on which you can find different versions of packet tracers. He just put them together like this, which is just kind of cool. So you can download it from here, but it's recommended to get it from the Cisco's website because you still have an account. You still need an account. You're going to see it really soon. You need an account to log in packet tracer before using it. If you don't have that account, you can use it as a guest, but you will be limited in some functionalities. So when you get to Packet Tracer and you download it, you're going to have a file like this one here. So let's go ahead and install it. I'm just gonna run it as an administrator or you can just double click on it. All right, so it's coming up here. We click on next, next, next. Yeah, I wanna create a shortcut, next, yes. 
I'm installing Packet Tracer now. It's going to take just a few minutes and it's going to be up. All right, so the install is over. We just click on Finish while launching the Packet Tracer. And this is what you get. So you see that when Packet Tracer comes up, there is this page asking you to log in. So you can log in here with your account that you created on networkacademy.com or netacad.com but for some reasons as i said it doesn't authenticate me since yesterday so what i'm gonna do is just click on here and log in as a guest that will open a web page where you're supposed to read everything um yeah to enroll to the course or whatever but let's go back to packet tracer and you will see a countdown here okay so once the countdown reaches zero we can click on confirm guest and packet tracer is already here uh, you can create new files, you can open a file. Actually, the file that I'm going to create here will be somewhere in the description of this lesson. So you can download it, open it, and you have the exact topology that we're going to have at, at the end of this simulation. Down here, you have all the devices. These are, these are network devices. You can see routers, uh, switches, uh, firewalls, and so on. These are end devices like PCs, laptops, servers, um, so yeah, it's it's really straightforward. You're going to master it really soon when we go deep into our labs. So for now, let's do our quick topology. What I'm going to do is just uh, drag a switch over here. A switch is used to connect two or multiple um, network endpoints or end devices. So we are going to bring a switch and then I'm going to add a desktop. This is Bob's desktop. I'm just, I'm just gonna rename it Bob. I don't know why, but I, I just like that name. And I'm going to drag a laptop here. And this belongs to Susan. Okay. And we are also going to drag our server. We're just gonna call it web server. All right. So what we have to do next is connect these devices together we need to use some cables cables are here and there are different types of cables in our case we need to we have two types because we are going to use copper cables here or ethernet cable so we are going to choose between crossover or straight through i think yeah straight through or crossover cables so uh, Okay, the, the truth is that stress through or crossover, those things are old. Right now, most of the new network interface card are automatic. They have, I think it's called MDIX. It, it's really automatic, so you don't have to know, you don't have to respect, because there are some rules uh, with cables. Let me go on Google. Google will be your friend, actually. If you are an engineer, you always Google stuff. So let's try to have the difference between um yep straight cables um against crossover okay this is what you're supposed to know all right for these signs this is a switch this is a router these are two switches and this is an end device of course so if you are connecting a switch to a router you're supposed to use a straight through cable if you are connecting a switch to a switch, you're supposed to use a straight through cable and so on. But these things is old, as I said, this is old. We don't we don't do it anymore most of the time. You just grab a cable, whatever cable you have, it will work because the network interface card will detect what kind of cable it is and it will align itself. So I don't want to do this. Uh, what we're going to do here is just use straight through cables all over. So this is crossover. This is straight through. So that's what we're going to use. So I'm choosing the fast ethernet port connected to the switch. I'm also grabbing another cable connected from the port to on the switch to the ethernet cable on the laptop. And then the last one is going to the server. So you have this, uh, these points are Ember because of spanning through protocol. You don't know it, maybe uh, we will learn it. Um, it's gonna take, uh, I think 30 seconds for it to come up completely and we'll be able to have okay you see this one coming green the next will be that and then 
the last one going to the server. So what we can do meanwhile is assign IP addresses to these devices. You see that when you hover on a device, it shows you the name of the device, like different ports on a device and the IPs that are configured on them and the MAC addresses. Right now we don't have anything configured. Let's go ahead and do it. So I just double click on that device and go under config, click on the fast ethernet interface and give it an IP address of 10.0.0.2. Um, subnet mask, we're going to leave just the same, just the default subnet mask. I know some of you don't have any idea of what is an IP address, what is a subnet mask, but just, uh, just know that the IP address is like a number that is identifying this device in our small network. So this one is this uh, 10.0.0.2. That was French. I was speaking some French. All right. So this one is 10.0.0.2 and we just put it like that and we close it and we go on the laptop we give it the ip of 10.0.0.3 with the default subnet mask i will also teach you what subnet mask is in uh, in the next lesson in some of the next lessons and that's it for the laptop so we go on the server uh, first of all, let's go under services because we want it to be our web server and the web uses the HTTP protocol. In this case, let's just shut down the HTTP. We don't want the web server to be up for now. And let's go under configuration and give it uh, 10.0.0.1 with the default subnet mask and that's it. So there's a command that you need to know from now on, it's called ping. Ping is used to test if you have connectivity to a certain device. Like if we are in our computer like this, we can go in the command prompt by typing CMD like command. And once we go in, we can do PING like ping. And we can try to ping some external device like the Google DNS, which has an IP of 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Yep, we have access to it because we have replies, which means we are connected to the internet. So in our topology here, when you click on when you click on this desktop, you can go under command prompt. You go first on the desktop and then command prompt, and you can type ping. Let's see if we can ping our server, which has the IP of 10.0.0.1. Yes, we have access to it, which is great. And let's then open the web browser to see if we can have access to the website, if there's any. So when I come here and I say 10.0.0.1, which is the IP of the server, there's nothing because we just shut down HTTP or HTTPS. It's timing out. So what we're gonna do is come on this server and go under services. Uh, under HTTP, what we're going to do is export our small website that I wrote. I also teach you how to create a website here on KB Trainings. I haven't done much on that, but I'll be doing it. So let's go and import some files from this computer. Um, I created a sample website. So I'm going to export this. And I'm also going to import, uh, sorry, so I'm going to import the image as well. So I want this to be the home page. So I'm going to rename it. Let me edit it and give it the name of index, which identify the, the main page, like the home page and click on save. It says the file is already there. Yeah, I want to override it. So let's see now. I'm turning on HTTP HTTPS. And if we go back to the desktop, and refresh this web page. Look at this. Boom. We have the web page already. The web page that we created in our server, it's showing up here telling you, welcome to this test website. KB Trainings, you made it. Give us a good, that's my name all over. And then give us a good again. So yeah, now you can leave. So we did it. We were able to access the web page that's in the server. So this is from Bob's computer or desktop. Let's go on Susan's laptop. We go under desktop and click on um, web browser. Yep. And from here we can do 10.0.0.1 and click on go. Yep. We have the web page. We just did it. We did a small network with two devices and one web server, and we were able to access the web server using the protocol HTTP. I'm going to save this file for you. So what we're going to do is just go under file, save as, 
and uh, let's go on the download um, web page and then I would just say sample web page that's going to be pt all right that's going to be the file that you can find in this um in this lesson you can download it and open it to see the exact, the exact same result on your end and you see here as a guest we can just save a file three times like we can have just three saves and i just i just click okay so yeah go on tisco's website and authenticate and uh, you'll be able to have access to all the features on, on packet tracer so yeah this is it this is uh this is uh some small lab that you can do with packet tracer have not have an idea on anything that or everything that we used here that's my goal you are at the right place i'm going to teach you everything we're going to move forward from there. So that was Packet Tracer. Next lesson, we're going to learn about GNS3 and I'll show you how to install it and uh, how to use it. Thank you so much for watching this. I'll see you in the next lesson. This is Guy and bye.